All right, what's up sellers? In this video, I'm gonna give you a full guide to Helium 10 and a complete tutorial on how you can use it to find products to sell on Amazon. And honestly, this is like by far the best part of selling on Amazon is product research. It is seriously just like finding the dream house for a really cheap price and you're like the only one who knows about it because you took the time to research and to learn the process. So it is like, for me, the most exciting thing about selling on Amazon. And when you know how to do it correctly, you can find like the most insane, easy products to sell on Amazon that just absolutely take off. So I wanna make sure that this video is absolutely valuable for you. And I packed in so much valuable content and just the tools that you really need to know to learn how to use to be successful. So please watch the entire thing. And if you have any questions during this entire video, please just comment down below and I will answer immediately. Even though there's so much money to be made on Amazon, there's like millions of different products that you could sell and there's over a hundred different product categories and subcategories on Amazon. So it's hard to know what product category you should actually be selling on because you should not be selling on all of them. And also you want to know what kind of products that you should be selling. So I'm going to go over those two main things. I'm going to explain what product categories you should be selling in and also within those product categories what products that you should be looking for when you're doing product research so that you don't launch the wrong product because that happens way too often also every week i'll be uploading more content about selling on amazon and so for you to not miss out on any new news or updates please subscribe down below so that you don't miss out on anything and also i would really appreciate it but i mean i want to get right into it eventually you're going to need to buy helium 10. now if you have it just hold on a sec if you don't have it here's a discount that you can use you can either get 20 percent off for six months or you can get 10 percent off for a month if you're unsure just get a month and you can cancel after a month but at least you're inching towards launching your product eventually getting back to helium 10 and when I look at all the tools that they have, there's 32 different tools. Now, don't get distracted by this because really we only need three tools for product research that are only necessary to use. There's Blackbox, Cerebro, and Magnet. These are the main tools. Blackbox is the basic tool where you could find trending keywords or products that are selling right now based off of what people want on Amazon. Now, Cerebro, is a tool that you can use to figure out which keywords your competitor is using to rank to the top of page one for those keywords. Now, for example, let's say I'm competing with Hydro Flask and I wanna figure out the keywords that they wanna use. I'm gonna use Cerebro and it'll basically be like a reverse product lookup and it'll give me all the keywords that they're ranking for on the top of page one. Now I know which keywords I should either advertise for or launch for, all right? now. That's, this is also a great way for you to find potential products, believe it or not, and I do this a lot. Now, Magnet is a really great tool where it's gonna act like a magnet. It's gonna act as in attracting all of the similar keywords to your keyword, uh, and this is gonna be really helpful for putting those keywords in your title, putting in the product description, and for your backend search terms, or even for ads. Now, all of these tools, especially these last two, can be used to find other potential products through keyword research. So we could find keywords or products through Blockbox, but then we can also use them in Cerebro or Magnet to spit out other similar keywords that might eventually yield to other potential products. Does that make sense? So we're gonna first be using Blockbox to talk about how to find potential products and keywords through this tool. And then later we'll be using Cerebro and Magnet, uh, how to use these correctly and efficiently to do this exact same thing, except instead of searching for potential keywords, we're gonna have a lot of keywords and then we just need to filter them out. When we come into black box, I don't want you to put anything up here quite yet because we need to talk about product categories. There are 29 different product categories that we could sell in on Amazon. Some of them absolutely stay away from, others absolute cash cow. And I'm gonna go through, the, through those. And there's a couple that I'm gonna leave like an asterisk on the top because sometimes you can sell products in those categories, but most of the time you're gonna to wanna to stay away from them. And that's gonna be dependent off of what you know about that product category and basically your core competency. So uh, appliances, I'm gonna stay away from. 
right? I don't want to compete with Black and Decker, uh, you know, DeWalt, whatever. Arts, crafts, and sewing, yes. Automotive, I'm going to pass. Baby, yes. Baby is a super great product category. You got to be careful though, because when it's when it comes to infants and kids, there's a lots of laws and regulations to clearly protect babies and infants. And so with that being said, there's a lot of different products that I've uh, found in the baby category over the years that have immediately become restrictive within the first like 12 months of that product. You know, for example, baby woven basket, like changing table, and it was super hot selling. I had a few friends selling it. All of a sudden they got tied up with five, 600 units that they couldn't sell anymore. And it really sucked for them. So you really got to do your research on baby, uh, beauty and personal care. I'm going to pass books. Yes, you can do really well with books, but we want to focus on private label, uh, CDs and vinyls. No, uh, camera and photo products. I would pass. I would also pass on cell phone accessories, clothing, shoes, and jewelry. Yes, potentially that could be a great one. Um, but I don't pass on that one. Computers and accessories. This is another one where it's an asterisk. This is one where you could do very well, but you also have to really know what's in that. Uh, electronics pass. All right, let's move on to the ones that you want to sell in. Health and household. Yes. Home and kitchen. Yes. Kitchen and dining. Yes. Office products. Yes. Patio and lawn and garden. Yes. Pet supplies. Yes. Sports and outdoors. Yes. Toys, home, and improvement, yes. Toys and games, yes. Now, I don't think what you realize about these categories is they all individually have about anywhere from five to like 20 different subcategories underneath those. So like there's so many products within each of these categories that you will not, you know, go empty handed. Let me give you an example. There's this product right here. It's a art supply. It's, you know, uh, like a painting kit. And if I want to see what category it's under, most likely it's going to be under arts, crafts, and sewing. But what subcategory is it? You're going to come all the way down here. You can do this on your computer and you're going to click art and painting kits. Now, when you get there, it shows you the top sellers in art and painting kits on the left-hand side. Well, what category is it under? Well, it's under the kits category and that kit category is under the painting, drawing, and art supplies category. Well, that's actually under the arts, crafts, and sewing category. So you see, I'm saying like, there's all these subcategories within a subcategory within a subcategory. So these are the categories that are absolutely money makers for Amazon FBA private label. Now, uh, when I want to look for keywords within each of these categories, I want a keyword with about a thousand searches a month, anywhere from a thousand to 15,000. Uh, if you really want to get to like two or 300,000, it's going to be quite competitive. So you have to have a lot of capital now, monthly revenue. Now we want a product that can do anywhere from 2000 to $30,000 a month in sales. And we want a price point of 20 to $35. I would not go below $20. I actually wouldn't go below 10 because the lower priced it is there's a good chance that you won't make any money if you end up having to run ads. So that's just a FYI. And then a review count, we want anywhere from zero to 400. All right. And we're not going to do anything with the review rating and the word count. Even though I have these 11 categories selected, I can actually search for keywords within all of these 11 categories. But what I want to do is just focus in on one category at a time. So I'm going to go to arts, crafts, and sewing, and then hit search. Now, as I go through these one by one, I'm going to look at search volume, monthly revenue and review counts. So for example, wedding invitation, 4,700 people a month are searching for this. And the review count is only 270. That means it's not very competitive. Now, one keyword that I really like is silicone beads for key for keychain making 5,400 people a month are searching for this. And there's only 43 average reviews. So that means that it's going to be extremely easy to launch up to the top of page one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on view on Amazon. And this is what it is. I really like this product because everything is different. That means I can go in there and add a new color. I can go ahead and create a new offer. I'm not just selling the exact, exact same thing and same color as everyone else. All right. Now, what I want to do is bring this keyword information over here so that I can actually keep track of my potential products. And I like to actually make some notes. So I would actually put... Uh, 
much variety, uh, you know, anything else that you would want to add on uh, that you want to remember about this keyword. All right. So let's see. I think the search volume was about five, four, five, zero. Okay. That fits our criteria of having a search volume of at least a thousand. The review count was, I think, 62 and the average revenue was 6445, right? That definitely fits what we're looking for. This is such a good potential product. Oh my gosh. Like this is worth it's like after watching this video, it's already worth its weight in gold. Uh, where you can actually go out and source this product, okay? Because there's literally no competition. You you, you would get it to the top page one in like two days. Uh, so with Black Box, the key is to go through these product categories one by one and find potential products that are doing a great number in revenue and also low in review count. So we found a couple potential products using Black Box. Now I want to show you how Cerebro works. Let's go ahead and come back to our uh, wood airplane example and let's find a listing that's doing really well and let's figure out how are they doing so well what other keywords are they ranking for besides wood airplane kits perfect example wood airplane gliders 20.99 i i guarantee you they probably cost three four bucks to buy and ship them to the amazon warehouse they have uh where is it how many reviews do they have Okay, they have about 328 and they're doing nearly $8,000 a month in sales, which is way good. So what we want to do is go ahead and click uh, this little box right here and let's run Cerebro. It comes up with 1,293 filtered keywords are indexed for this product. We could see right here on organic rank and even sponsored rank how many different pages or how many different keywords he's ranked at the top of page one for and that is a lot this guy's doing really really well all of these he's on the top of page one for some of them have i mean like there's this one that has a good search following but the rest are like pretty mediocre ish honestly what i'm seeing right here is so many different ways to say wood airplane kit now I see the word balsa in here a lot. I want to make sure that that's not patented, but we're, we're seeing a lot of different ways to say this product. And that is a good thing. We want as many different ways to say our product as possible. That also has a high search volume. So when you're pulling up Cerebro, the main things to look at is one search volume. You know what that is Two, CPR. That's basically the number of units that you need to give away over an eight day period to the appear to the top of page one. And honestly, Helium 10 is pretty generous with this number, meaning typically it's not as high as this. So for example, this says you need to give away 29 products over eight days. I guarantee you, if you do this correctly, you could give away 29 product, like you can give away like, like a fourth of this number. So you could probably get away with giving away five products across two days and you would get to the top of page one for this keyword. All right. So that's just something I've learned with my products. Next, we, kn we know we the organic rank, sponsored rank, and then Cerebro IQ score. This is so, so, so uh, important to use and not a lot of people talk about it because Cerebro IQ is basically in the search volume divided by the number of competing products. Because if you notice on here, average review is not on here. So they need another way to detect competition and that's by competing products. This is really important because there may be a keyword out there that has a very high review count. And so you're like, gosh, I can't rank to the top page one for this. But if the number of competing products is very low, that means that you're going to be able to get onto page two or three pretty easily by just launching the product and activating your listing. And then through some organic search by uh tactics you can get to the top of page one for that keyword anyways uh with this i would try to stay away from products that have a high search volume and a high competing products over 2000 that's just my personal opinion but this is so fascinating so for example if i was selling this product i would want to uh really focus in on keywords that have a high search volume and a uh good I, IQ score. So what we're going to do is actually show our filters and we have 1200 keywords, but let's filter these out. We don't want to spend time with keywords below 500 to start off with. 
that really narrows it down to 69 filtered keywords. Now I'm looking for potential products, not just airplane kits anymore. And so uh, let's rank this to the top. So uh, now we can actually see other potential keywords that have a little bit of a better search volume. And already, what's this? Foam airplanes for kids. This is really cool, okay? Has a good search volume. CPR is low. IQ score or rubber band minigun. That's a really good product. Uh, airplane launcher toy. Man, this is awesome. So I'm gonna click this. And this is awesome because this is a different kind of airplane, but it's a foam airplane for kids. And let's see what the numbers look like off of X-Ray. As I pull up X-Ray, numbers look really good. The revenue is it's like super good, like a lot better than I thought but the review count is pretty high, right? Um, now what's refreshing is there's these guys who have $11,000 in sales and they have 48 reviews and they're on the top of page one. And the review count is really high. Sorry, right here. The review count is really high on listings one through 10, but as you scroll down, they get a little bit lower. So, so there's some hope, all right? Uh, I think this could be a good potential uh, keyword Foam airplanes for kids. And I will fill that out later. Okay. And what's so cool is we found that potential keyword by Cerebro by looking at a competitor's keywords. Like, I freaking love this stuff. My goodness. Uh, let's see. Styrofoam airplanes for kids. And once we come to a foam airplane for kids, we can actually uh, open up X-Ray again, look look at the person who's selling the best, and then do the same thing. Look at their keywords, and you're going down the rabbit hole once again, and you're finding more and more potential products and keywords. And you know what I love about the strategy is not many people do it, and so it doesn't invite a lot of competition, and it's probably the best way to find niche but really high profitable products. So. That's how you use Cerebro. Now, let's say if we wanna use Magnet and try to find more keywords. So we'll click uh, Foam Airplanes for Kids. Now let's do the same thing, but with Magnet. So I'll click Magnet and I'll do Foam Airplanes for Kids. Now it's gonna attract very, very similar keywords to Foam Airplanes for Kids. And this is so cool. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna filter out keywords by search volume first and then look for keywords that uh, could yield into a different product. So 5,600 keywords filtered out, uh, spilled out, uh, but some of the search volumes are just crap. So once again, let's start off with 500. Usually I do 1,000, but I like to start off with filtering out any keywords below 500. That yields 285. That's good, but let's yield it even more. 188. Awesome. So I want to yield these from the top down. Um, okay. So I'm not going to spend much attention to like plane airplane toy. That's just a little too broad. I want something a little bit more specific. Uh, kids outdoor out kids outdoor. Okay. Not that. Uh, Easter basket stuffers. Probably not a seasonal. Easter egg fillers, voice changer, stomp rocket. Mm, I would stay away from that one. It looks like it's a patented product. S Toy Story party favors, foam airplanes for kids, outdoor glider. That could be a cool one. Oh, no. Lego airplane, wind up toys. Planes, airplanes. Now, as I'm looking through these potential keywords, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look for niche products, niche keywords, and I'm going to look for uh, something that has a good search volume, but the competing products isn't too high. All right, that's how you use magnets.